The first advice I'll give you is to spend time with whatever you tell your children to do, you do it yourself too. And sisters, I know your husbands put a lot of pressure on you sometimes to make the most elaborate iftar ever made in human history. But brothers, get you know, don't put pressure on the women to cook so much so they're cooking half the day of the fast, they're just cooking. They're just standing in front of the stove cooking and not doing anything else. Have a light iftar. Don't have a heavy iftar. Don't don't fry foods and you know over overcook. You know, you cook enough for 10 people and there's two people sitting there. This is the month to remember the, the advice of Rasulullah when he tells us to fill one third of our stomach. You know, one third for meal, one third for drink, and the other leave the third alone. This is not the month for you to take, you know, the, the, you sit 10 minutes before Maghrib, you sit at the table and you're waiting. And you, you fill the, you know, got a mountain of ketchup on your plate, and you've got the fries and the pakore and the samosa and all of this stuff, and you're just making a mountain of food inside. And by the time you're done with that, you, you can barely stand up from out of it. Most people, it's unfortunate, most Muslims, they end up gaining weight in Ramadan, not losing weight. You know, eat normal, eat light. Eat light so you have the energy to move around. Don't fill your stomach. That's the training. What's the point of all day of fasting? Allah is training us to be able to do without too much food and then overeat at the end of all of it. It defeats the purpose. And obviously when you have that kind of a state, how in the world are you going to come for taraweeh? And even if you do, after two rakahs, you're going to be standing there waiting for the imam. When is he going to go into ruku? Man, this one's going too long. That's what's going to happen to you. You don't want that to happen. You want to make the most of this month. It has to do with how you will eat, what your schedule will be. How the entire family is motivated to do their best. You, everybody has to work hard on this. Everybody does. And not every family is at the same level. MashaAllah, we have a lot of kufal in the community. A lot of people in the community that come for pretty much every prayer. They, they're here and there's so many people that are not here. Not everybody is at the same level. But you know what? You have to do better this Ramadan than you did last Ramadan. Your family has to do better this Ramadan than they did last Ramadan. You personally, your children, the wife, everybody. You're not in competition with anybody else. You're in competition with yourself. You have to improve yourself. You have to ask yourself, what did I mess up in Ramadan? And how am I going to fix that this Ramadan? Now, so this, this is a little bit about, about the sisters. Also sisters, even if you are preparing meals or you're, you're spending a lot of time at home or, or you know, busy with other things, Try to use that time up either for reciting, reviewing the Qur'an you've memorized, listening to recitation, listening to tafsir. Explanations of the Qur'an, whether it's in Urdu, in Arabic or English, listen to it. Listen to that explanation. I also have advice for the Qufad that are in the audience. Um, a lot of our Qufad, mashallah, the only thing they do in Ramadan is prepare for taraweeh. Right, the only thing on the mind is I gotta review, I gotta review because I need I gotta lead prayer in front of ten people or a hundred people, a thousand people. So I just have to review my Quran. And it takes away from the khushua of Ramadan. Have a dedicated time for review. But also because Alhamdulillah you've already memorized the entire Quran, you should be focused on now as much as you can be on trying to understand the Quran. It's a tragedy when we have a generation of people that have memorized the Quran and they don't understand it. This is the month you should try, especially the Qufab, should go out of their way to read tafsir, read or listen to tafsir, listen to explanation, you know, and really try to internalize what it is that they're reciting. You should have a program of, you know, every year I'm going to study two, three juz of tafsir. So over the next 10 years, inshallah, you study the entire Quran just in Ramadan. That's especially for the Qufab. 